I'm Susan Koenig and this is Somatics for You. This video is one of a group of videos I've been doing about the feet and instead of doing somatic movements, which is my specialty and what I usually do, I'm going to be showing some fascial techniques that I've been using to help rehabilitate my left sprained foot. I'm quite far along in the healing process. You can, I don't even think you can see any of the discoloration. I can still see a little bit of discoloration around here and right in here and a little bit in here. Maybe you can see that, maybe you can't. These fascial techniques are good for everybody and all feet, not just if you're rehabilitating your uh, feet or foot from an injury or a sprain. But I wanted to show you some of the things that I've been doing that I have been found, finding very, very helpful. I've been listening to some YouTubes, especially Dr. Schleip, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, um, who I just think is a fantastic lecturer and he talks a lot about fascia and connective tissue. Uh, the fascia is a form of connective tissue. Basically, connective tissue is the fibrous web found throughout the body. It wraps everything. It wraps individual muscle fibers, groups of muscles, whole muscles, groups of groups of muscles, whole limbs. It wraps blood vessels and nerves and bones. It wraps everything, all the organs. And so this is a pervasive tissue throughout the body. And for a long time, it was considered just waste and they would dissect it away. But in the last some years, people have finally begun to do research on the fascial uh, network and it's turning out to be very interesting and very important to full body organization and movement and proprioception, which is knowing where we are in gravity and where we are in space, where our limbs are in space, where our body is in space, and interoception, that's a sense of knowing that I'm me. And um, the fascia is turning out to be an extremely important, maybe the most important tissue with sensory receptors with a lot of pain receptors or nociceptors in them. And so it's important to keep your fascia mobile and supple so that it can slide and move and um, promote movement in your body rather than inhibit movement in your body. As I listen to the lectures, I'm trying to figure out now how could I apply what they're saying to my actual foot and do some actual manual manipulation massage techniques for the fascia. And so here's what I've come up with. I also have a few props because when my ankle, when not my ankle sprain, when my foot sprain was new and I sprained my foot right here at the cuboid bone, a couple of things really gave me a lot of comfort. Good old rubbing alcohol. I can't tell you how soothing this is. Just regular old rubbing alcohol. I would put it on several times a day. I went to Kaiser. I have Kaiser. And uh, I had an x-ray. I hadn't broken any bones. Um, and one of the things that they gave me was this wonderful, nice, wide wrap. It's, it's elastic, but it's not real tight or anything like that and they showed me how to wrap my foot around in a figure eight, and maybe I did it like they showed me, but it, it was very comfortable. And so for um, a certain length of time, Chester, can you please move out of the way? Go on, go on, move. Um, I would wrap my foot and that would help to hold it because it didn't really want to move very much and that would really hold my foot together. And then I graduated to a compression sock, which I actually still wear most of the time. I'm still liking the compression sock. It's a little bit of effort to put it on and to get it off, but again, it really hold, held my foot in and felt very comfortable and helped me to move. Um, when I was uh, wrapping, uh, when I was wearing the compression sock and wrapping, which gave me extra support, I was also looking for shoes that were very non-pliable. 
these clogs don't have a lot of give in them and that was a, and they were easy for me to get on with all this wrapping on my foot but again it would hold my foot stiffly and when it was really in the early phases of healing and it did not want to be moved these were really comfortable shoes now I can, now I'm wearing my compression sock and any shoes I want to wear not floppy shoes but just my regular sketchers or my tennis shoes they are they are fine now I also have a marijuana cream I love this cream I have found it's very important to have THC as well as CBD oil in the cream there's something about that combination that I find works even better and is very soothing the other thing that I I use when my foot is wrapped or especially when my foot was wrapped in, in all the wrap and the compression sock was this nice long shoehorn that my friend Janet Jacobson gave me I actually have one from my dad and I keep it in my office for my clients who use it all the time and then she brought one to me and I thought well I do I need it and then as I had all this wrapping on to get my shoe on of my left foot I found it very helpful five bucks at a variety store so those are the things that have really other things that have helped me but now I want to show you some fascial techniques so the superficial fascia right under the skin you want you want to have your skin be loose and mobile what happens is and if you're not moving the fascia can glue together and these layers get very stuck and you want to unstick them so what I've been doing and you can do this anywhere in your body I've been doing a kind of skin rolling technique all along my foot I go in various directions sometimes I kind of lift and um, move back and forth and I, these these have been really really nice um, I can do them really quite easily now to myself because I've been doing this for a few weeks and I try to get different parts of my foot I can tell where the fascia is more glued to the under structure because I have a hard time picking it up to roll the skin and I'll even do this on muscles like the anterior tibialis, which is a dorsiflexor, a major dorsiflexor. I will do skin rolling. I'll go in both directions. I usually go in the direction of the fibers, but sometimes I just go every which way. It's a little harder for me to skin roll back here, but I can kind of just sort of squish and lift the tissue so I can feel what you want to do with connective tissue you have there's a high density of proprioceptive proprioceptors in the septums in the division so like the gastrocnemius has two heads here's the medial head over here is the lateral head there's a groove or a septum and I'm trying to have my fingers find this groove and come up into the groove and kind of separate the two heads because they can get glued together in the septums and then they the the two heads don't work as well when they need to be at different angles and different parts of the gastrocnemius need to work so i come up into the the septums i also again i try to skin roll wherever i can also I look for you can almost see this groove the soleus muscle is underneath the gastrocnemius but it does stick out it sticks out a little bit over here and I can actually feel this this groove this division and so I just try to get in there for a while I had quite a lot of um, pain where I had trigger points now I've been working it so much I have very few tree I don't come across trigger points very often um, because I've been working this tissue quite a lot but I look for them some at the beginning I would have trigger points in various parts of the gastrocnemius 
and especially I would have in the soleus, where the soleus comes down. So you, back here you have your Achilles tendon, but on either side of the Achilles tendon, the soleus muscle comes quite low. The gastrocnemius, the heads turn into the Achilles tendon pretty high, right, right here on the back of the foreleg. So on either side of the Achilles tendon, when I first began to work this area, which is soleus muscle, it was really quite tender on me. Now I can pull and pinch and massage and it feels, it feels great. I can't wait to do it. The other thing that I've been doing for myself is working with the retinaculums. The retinaculums are a form of connective tissue or fascia that are like band-aids that wrap around and behind the foot and they have a tendency to droop distally. So uh, one technique to use, and my friend Robert Flamia, a terrific massage therapist in Berkeley, reminded me of the retinaculum technique where you basically just go in and you just push them back up. It's very comforting. I'm not sure I'm really feeling them. Maybe right in here I can feel them a little bit and kind of feel that I'm pushing them up, but I'm just taking it on faith that that's what's happening. And sometimes I'll dorsiflex, and as I bring my foot back down, I'll come up as if I could come into those areas a little bit more easily. all different parts. And then of course we have tendon, um, ankle tendons, uh, the, the large, uh, the large uh, tendons that come under the ankle and I'll just kind of work back and forth in kind of half moons in this area. Again, everything to a comfortable touch, not overdoing it. I love this retinaculum work. It's just very, very comforting. And actually this skin rolling, I can really feel that it's helped me a lot. I can really feel that uh, parts of the superficial fascia were really quite glued together from being immobile for a, a while or not moving very much for a while. And now I can really pick up the skin much better. Uh, the last move that I wanna show you is um, working with the plantar fascia, um, I just reach underneath my foot and um, I, I like to work toward the heel. One, it's I can do it to myself and it's much easier to come toward myself. Plus, there's, it feels right to be working toward the heels from distal to proximal from toe or ball of the foot. And I just come down into different areas. And I'm probably also working some of the uh, abductor and adductor muscles of like the little toe and the big toe as I come more towards the sides. And that just all feels really very, very good. So those are some of the fascial techniques that I've been uh, trying to figure out from listening to these lectures on fascia and um, how to interpret them to get some manual massage work and body work into my feet. Perhaps you'll try these. Thank you very much.